And that was the top secret of animation. <laughs> I just had a special request of uh, how to uh, get a certain brush stroke in this program, because every time that uh, I'm drawing it, see this little control right down here? This little, like, I don't know what that's, like a teardrop? You don't have that selected. Oh, okay. Pick these brush things. You get a, oops. This is the kind of line you get. When you hit this little thing, it's a pressure sensitivity button. You get a nice thick and thin. It's spooky. You got it. Oh, that's a lot Sounds good. No. <laughs> Um, I've just been reminded, I was going to show you guys some stuff I told you to have about this in Dr. Martin, but this is awesome. I've got some top secret stuff here you're not supposed to see, like I'll turn the video off for this. <laughs> Demonstration of that. If it's okay, if it's, if it's too boring, I'm not going to. I know what it's like to watch someone have me, it's really boring. <laughs> is that alright? And uh, if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, please <laughs> For one thing, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know, when I first get a scene, how I approach it is I'll, if there's dialogue, I'll listen to the soundtrack over and over and over and over and over and over, a million times to really get it in my mind, what, what's being said, how it's being delivered, and uh, you know, what the performance is really like, and try to envision, just with, just with my imagination before I do any drawings at all, just envision what's being said and how it's being performed, what are the possibilities that you can do with it. Um, I remember doing, just as an example, I remember working on a, uh, a commercial from Mexico uh, for chopped chocolate, Cocoa Krispies. And it was this elephant named Melvin, I guess it was <laughs> popular down there, and he said this dialogue, and I had to make him you know, act, and was like, well, what's he saying, you know, so I had to figure out what it was in um, English, and then I had to learn what it was in Spanish, and then I had to, like, figure out every little sound of what he's saying so I could match it, it's just right for Spanish. And so uh, I had the, you know, that was back in like 91. How many years is that? 20, 20 yeah. years ago? <laughs> 20 years ago, I animated this scene with this elephant. I remember the words he said. <coughs> Choco Krispies de Kellogg's is the grand sabor of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's how many times I listened to it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> and his other line in another scene. That was the other one. <laughs> Real quick. But what I do is I'll, I'll listen to the soundtrack of the bell, like I said, and listen to it over and over and now. Try to envision, like, for example, when you hear any actor do a, a line of dialogue, before you start to animate it, you have to pick it apart and figure out what the emphasis, where the emphasis is. Like, for example, if you say, um, if you listen to a soundtrack and, and the guy says, uh, um, I told you I'll pick it up tomorrow. There's so many different ways to deliver it by the, by the emphasis. So I'll, I'll listen and listen if he's saying, I told you I'll pick it up tomorrow. Or I told you I'll pick it up tomorrow. Or I told you I'll pick it up tomorrow. Or I'll tell, I told you I'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> There's so many different ways that you're going to act it out depending on how they're delivering the performance. I'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> There's so many different ways. So that's the first thing I do is try to, try to figure that out. And then I'll start doing thumbnail sketches, which is really invaluable for you guys, whether you're doing CG or stop motion or anything else. Thumbnail stuff out. I try to figure out what uh, the character is going to do. Uh, I'll try to Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. 
told me this, Santosh, that the animators of Pixar, they like to sit there and thumbnail stuff out. Well, they'll animate it on paper first, right? A little rough. Yeah, somewhere. Just to figure out before they actually animate the CG. I've seen, it, I've seen it the same way with, um, I don't know, for instance, with uh, Tim Burton's Dogma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's you two? You guys gotta see this. It's awesome. This this film was done in stop motion and it's beautiful. And I didn't know this, but I got this DVD called it's a series called Shorts. And this film was on there. I didn't even know it was on there. I didn't know about the DVD. I was just buying it for the heck of it. This is a good story. It's all stop motion. And you know how they have those alternate camera features? Where you can see another camera angle? Well, it had... They had another version of this in the pencil test form that they did. They animated the entire film in pencil before they even did the stop motion. First, I'll show you that and you can see it. Eisenhower runs for president. Rosenberg's going to the chair. Hemingway walks off with a pool of surprise. Big stories in a big town, and what do I get? A woman who eats five dollar bills. I'm sitting on the sidelines watching the big boys score home runs. Well, now it's my turn to play ball. Not what I pick the team, you don't. You gotta wait your turn. Just like everybody else. Wait! I've been waiting long enough. And I'm not gonna wait anymore. Marciano's in town for the big fight. I could go down to D'Angelo's right now and get you a real story. I'll give you a real story. Either get back in line or get off this paper. It's so easy for you. You sat behind that desk calling all the shots. Well, I know how you got there. Some front page story that'll make. I gotta... <laughs> See the young bloods pressing you for a big story again, boss. Here's the latest on the Marciano fight. What a rotten, stinking world! You guys, you guys are all the same. <laughs> Big stories in a big town, and what do I get? 
the woman a week's five dollar bills. I'm sitting on the sidelines watching the big boys go home runs. Well, now it's my turn to play ball. Now, what I pick the team, you don't. You gotta wait your turn, just like everybody else. Wait, I've been waiting long enough. I'm not gonna wait anymore. Marciano should down the big bike. I could go down to D'Angelo's right now and get you a real story. I'll give you a real story. Either get back in line or get off this paper. It's so easy for you. You sat behind that desk calling all the shots. Well, I know how you got there. There's some front page story that'll make. Well, I, I gotta. <laughs> I see the young bloods pressing you for a big story again, boss. Here's the latest on the Marciano fight. What a rotten, stinking world. You guys, you guys are all the same. Is that Kirk Douglas' voice? I think it's a <laughs> he said, yeah, sure, okay. So I'd sit there and watch him. He was so dull because, it, you know, I mean, look, it's frame by frame, you know. It's like watching paint dry or watching a uh, clock tick by. But uh, I learned so much from watching him. That's what I thought I would do a live demo of performance and it's, it's good to see how someone approaches it. And I highly recommend checking out you know, different artists as you can. I might put like, those are two extremes where he's like slowly going up on the street. I might put like 10 drawings in between. Are you going in between frames like that? Oh, it's with the uh, arrow keys. trying to get at was how do I position the frames and the time off to work with them. That's what I'm doing here. I'll show you guys. I can, I can now flip with the onion skin button on right here. I can see when I open them up and put a blank frame in between, it's like having a new sheet of paper so I can see what the spacing is. I can go ahead and throw in that new in between. This is how I did that foghorn late one thing. That same way. I did all the extremes. It's a little, like, there's too many lines and it's kind of scribbling down, so I'll turn it off. And this is the equivalent of turning the bottom light off on animation tape. And I'll just flip the papers like this and see where the spacing is. Right. Is there an animated scene which you go in flash first? That's what I do? I'm going to do that type No, actually, no, we don't do it on paper. But there's certain advantages to a flash over paper, which is if I draw that head too big, I can take this instead of you know, erasing it or whatever. I go, no, I want that head to be tilted a little bit more. So I hit Q, and I just tilt it. Voila, I'm drawing it. Oh, I just messed up. No. But it, it's great when you can do that with any part. You can take like the whole section of the arm and Here, it's just fantastic. 
Too bad we'll be out here. Rhythms. I notice uh, over the years I've been teaching, I've noticed a lot of students when they animate, they'll do like this, and then they'll do this, and this, and this, and just by the nature of blocking in things like that in general, it kind of stiffens it up because you are thinking about pieces. Mm -hmm. What I try to teach them is to get into a rhythm, like try to make things flow in rhythm all the time. It just gives so much more appeal to let the eye flow through the figure in the place. Even in the end, you know, you can go from the thumb flat out and things like that. It's curves. gives a more nice flow and feeling. It's, it's perfect for movement rather than this. This is kind of still different. That's why a lot of times in some CG models it's tough to uh, get a nice flow because of the way it's built and kind of the mercy sometimes. How it really feels. Thank God nowadays their uh, uh, the models are so awesome. You know, I mean, look at right too. I saw that, I was like, look at that, the body's squashing and stretching. <laughs> it's so beautiful. You did a great job. Man. Story. <laughs> <laughs> when I was working on the Stuart Little Part 2, they had these Unix classes that we had to go to, and they were so boring, so dull. It's all code. The guy got on the chalkboard and was like, you know, okay, when you want this command, you gotta type in this, type, 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 type. And I'm like, this is animation, you gotta type? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and I wasn't sleeping so hot anyway, so uh, I was like, sleep in the class and the way the classroom was set up was there was all these rows of tables right and we were really packed in solid and each you know each person had a, a computer monitor like right in front of us so there was one right behind me the guys and I'm sitting there and I just went out man I passed out <laughs> and my head went back and went BAM and that computer oh. monitor was like <laughs> I woke up and everybody was laughing <laughs> and the guy who was speaking was like I fell asleep during my life <laughs> Have you guys seen the uh, DVDs from uh, Richard Williams' book? It's got a couple of set of DVDs. Yeah. If you have a 
haven't seen it, check them out. There's one thing at the very, very end that he talks about where he's given his whole master class, right? He covers all the basics, you know, squash and stretch, arts, all through everything. Overlapping. And he, uh, he said at the end of the whole master class thing, you know, this girl comes up to me and she says, that was awesome, but when are you going to get to the advanced stuff? He said, what do you mean the advanced stuff? She said, you know, the advanced stuff, the really, you know, advanced, the sophisticated stuff. He said, that was it. <laughs> he said, all these weeks I've been showing you all these basics, and you take all those basics and you put them together, it's what you do with it that makes it advance, you know, really shine. And he's absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny, I used to think that too. I think, where, where's the magic stuff? <laughs> and it's like all the basics put together. That's all it really is. Now that I've got these poses, I'm going to go in and do some break things. I'm not going to waste your time by putting 14 drawings in between the slow parts. <laughs> I'll go from this to this, because there's a big gap there. And if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, like, what are you thinking? What are you doing here? Why are you doing this? You could tell us a little bit about the production pipeline. Sure. Company. Um, just in general, like how an animated feature is usually put together, films right. put together. Uh, normally, it's it's um, the storyboard is created. Well, first there'll be some development, of course. You know, there's development to figure out the characters what look like, um, the environments, props, things like that. And then the storyboard is, is is locked down. And after the storyboard's done, then copies of the storyboard will go to character designers background artists, so they'll start creating the environments and the backgrounds, and then to a character layout artist. And what they'll do is they'll take the storyboard, which has all the general acting in it, and they'll kind of like flush it out and put more extreme poses in there. It's almost like, I mean, you can, it's kind of a gray area when you do character layout, because you can put in all the poses, all the extreme poses that you want, if you want the animator to follow something specific, or you can just leave it kind of general and leave it up to the animator to create more of the performance. So it's up to the next step usually is the backgrounds are being done and uh, whenever the backgrounds are finished they usually give copies to the animators because like you know, so they'll have the exact environment they're going to move the character around it. and um, <coughs> the layout guys will give their layouts to the animators and they'll start fleshing out the poses based on the layouts and the character designers are going to be doing the refinements and the is done, it goes to animation cleanup and they'll do a bit of fine movements in between. So uh, when you're animating, so at that time you already have the resources like cat and the and the and around. So you don't have to yeah. do the cat but Yeah, exactly. Usually a lot of stuff is done for the animator, like um, all the, the major poses that you figure out the storytelling poses so like you know, large instead of those storyboard panels, they'll be full size of the paper so you can just go over. <coughs> and um, um, yeah, you, if your animator gets a set of character model sheets, so he knows exactly what it looks like from every angle, you know, you get the background layout, and you get the character layout. So you've got this whole complete package, usually in a folder or something. Work with that. What time do you usually have those um, hmm, scenes? That's a good question. If it's a really long scene, I've heard, you know, some scenes could take about a month to do. Like a long scene? How long is that? Uh, I'd say a 30 second scene is long. I had to do a 30 second scene in Flash for a pilot that was being done about two years ago, and it took me three days to do that. But it was just the eyes. And there was like a dumpster, it was all dark, and the eyes were like acting. It was like a bicycle with headlights. And it was like, I don't know, miles or anything. 
seconds, which is a long time. Usually when you'll find an animation, you'll spend a lot of time animating something, and then you watch it, it's like over. <laughs> In two seconds, you're like, oh, man, I'm going to go that forever. <laughs> but this one was long. 30 seconds is a long time. It's like a short film, so. So exactly how, uh, how are the characters broken down for you when you get the character model type? Um, there's two different ways. One way is sometimes they'll do like this, the standard poses. They'll just have them stand like this in front and profile and from the back. So you see if they look at it Sometimes they'll do three-quarter rear or three-quarter front. And other times they won't do that at all. They'll just take like someone will hand me a rough scene and they'll pick out cool poses that show different angles of the head and stuff like that. And they'll just make a compilation sheet of all these different poses for that scene. Hmm. So it's not how to get out one thing you definitely have to do is have to simplify. If you've got a really, like in Filmation, we had really complicated characters with vests and, and buckles and buttons and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, you just have to learn how to simplify it down to the basic shapes like this. Yeah. Quick time. Quick time. Yeah. This shows this demonstration to show how you know this is more finished, but you can see that it's colored a little bit and some clean lines that describe all the details on the character. I start out with a stick figure. too much time in trying to figure something out and you, you, you expedite getting it to work. So if you have any changes, it's easy to change a script rather than something, oh my god, i got to redraw the clothing and the eyes and you know, the, the highlight and the pupil and all this other stuff. It's just ridiculous. It's much faster to just go ahead and animate it all out of this thing and just go over it and flush it out and clean it up and done. What tool did you use to clean it up in Flash? Um, I usually use the brush tool. You just use the paintbrush tool and just be careful with it? Yeah, be very careful. Another cool thing is there's that undo, you know, control D. So if you do something that's wrong, you undo, undo, undo. So it's just right. And after a while of doing that, you kind of get your hand gets kind of used to putting down strokes. You don't have to undo as much anymore. You can just go. And then you're just like pocket filling the yeah. closed area. Exactly. No pencil. No, no pencil at all. I just uh, got off a project um, in February. Uh, it was this project that Tom Hanks was working on for 10 years. It was like his pet project. And we were doing flash animation webisodes of that. And uh, that's how we did it. We just roughed it out like this, you know, with a brush tool, and then uh, cleaned it up in a separate layer. It's a lot of work, but it looked pretty cool. I, unfortunately, the investors that were going to uh, the money never put up the money, so the company kind of bit the bullet and was paying everybody for the longest time, like six months. I mean, they just had to shut down production because of the money. So, unfortunately, I wish I had something to show, but I don't. It looked really cool. It was all comic book stuff, very realistic. You can show the Yeah. So, you know, production's already production? Yeah, because it was never released. There might be some images or something that Tom Hanks put out, but 
He's got enough money. He's got enough money. He's got enough money. But no, he didn't. He had some other some foreign investors and they never came through. Then it turns out that uh, they had like seven other projects that they promised that they would invest in that they never would fall down. And so it's like get in the line. <laughs> you know, for legal action, whatever. God, it's just unbelievable. Some people. various different ways. There's, everybody's got a different story. My story was um, I drove out here from Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> and I had no place to stay, no job. And all I knew was I was enrolled in a school to take animation classes. And so I drove out here with all my possessions in my car and I just opened up the phone book when I got here and just started a checklist of all the different studios in town and all they want to looking for a job. And eventually, you know, if you go through all the yellow pages, it's like, okay, well, you no know, fights, that's it. So you gotta go to McDonald's now. <laughs> so you gotta eat, you know. So I got my jacket on, I'm going out the door, go to McDonald's, literally, go to McDonald's and the phone rings. And it was filmation. Turn around and answer and say, Yeah, we like your uh, your application you filled out. That's such nice printing. I want to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> printing. <laughs> yeah, we want you to like label folders. That's what your job is. Oh, yeah. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I knew that if I could just get in, I could learn everything and work my way up later. I didn't have to worry about this. So just as long as I got in, I was thrilled, man. I started on Monday. You know how long that job lasted? Five years. Oh, oh, wow. That's a long one. Labeling five years? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was like the first six months, maybe, doing that. And I was hustling, man. I was working so hard, running around everywhere, and I caught some guy's eye in this other department. Said, I like you, man. You're always running around. He says, I want you in my department. <laughs> so he hired me in there. I was scene planning. And what I would do in that job is I'd take the uh, storyboards and make sure, go through all the layout folders like I was talking about before, and make sure everything drives and then hooks up and works, and then, uh, you know, just like kind of approve it. And then send it around. If there was anything missing, I'd have to go to the layout department and have fill it in. So that's how it started, was just knocking on all the doors on everywhere, anywhere. Just had to be persistent. Man, I'm so ready to put it on. Give us a quarter pound. Can you imagine how much money benefits? Yeah, I get to have free lunch here. <laughs> but uh, during the night, during the evenings, I would take animation classes, drawing classes, whatever classes I could afford. When I was working during the day, I took classes on weekends. Just went nuts. You know? on the job, I was thinking about filmation at the time, I was filmation, I'm not filmation now, um, was the whole studio was in one building, everything. They had ink and paint, they had uh, storyboard, writing, writing wing was in there, the camera department, they did everything on the one roof, and I would, on my breaks, I'd go around all the different Man, what are you doing? Can I see cool? <laughs> they were like more than happy to show me. So I learned so much on the job, you know, just going around and picking people's brain. How do you do that? And how do you do that out? And they'd show me all the tips and tricks. And it was just like, oh, this is way. This is amazing, man. And taking classes at night at the same time. Double the education. Where I don't want people. Anything on 3D? Oh, yeah, I worked on my first CG project with Mighty Joe Young. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, Maya was a beta testing software at the time. Oh. So, talk about bugs, man. 
I had so much hash when I was in the The first day on the job, also I worked on Stuart Little Part 2 and then the Language and the Wardrobe. This is the recent project. Um, the first day on Mighty Joe Young, the, the supervisor of the meeting, I said, okay, here's your seat, and here's my eyes on the computer. Here's the manual, it's boom, and it's a box, uh, three big volumes. I said, just do the tutorials and you know, learn that one. And then we'll be ready to go into production in about three months. <laughs> so uh, I did the tutorials, then I find out you know, things weren't working. I was like, what's wrong? I asked these other guys over there, the CG guys, and they said, oh, that's a typo. You can't do that. You're not supposed to push that key, you're supposed to push this key. I would never have known, thanks. So that's why I was eating a lot of aspirin. <laughs> Just as I was giving you the AAs. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was very fun. And uh, so I go through these tutorials. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I, I got aggressive a little bit. I thought I had myself. The guy leaves the cubicle and says, okay, here's the manuals, right? So I look at the manuals, I'm opening them up. I'm looking at them, I'm looking through them, and I'm looking at the computer, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's just a monitor, right? And there's a keyboard. And I'm like, I don't know what's. So I asked this guy, how do you turn this thing on, man? He says, oh, dude, there's a box under here, you gotta push the button. <laughs> That's how much I knew about computers. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mom, if you're watching. <laughs> no disrespect, Mom. Drawings are usually felt, not seen, so you can get away with a lot of stuff. I mean, but do that. Yeah. I'd like to, if that's, any questions about this procedure? Yeah, would you, uh, you know, when I give you the drawing? Yeah, sure, okay. I mean, I don't have to do it, but I think I Oh, yeah, yeah, I would definitely go in there and put it on twos, probably. Oh, Except for this quick part right here that's on ones. Bam, that's got to be fast, otherwise. Yeah. I'll show you what otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> what if I did put that on twos? That's another thing I encourage students to do is whenever you learn any rules about animation, no matter what it is, squash and stretch, follow through overlap, um, primary, secondary movements, close to post, straight ahead, try it the way it says in a book or whatever, or however anybody teaches you, and then try it the wrong way and see what the results are. You're going to learn so fast why well, that doesn't work or that doesn't get the result that I want. I want this result. You know, you might want to break the rules. So that's why I say try breaking the rules to see. See, it kind of loses that zip and it's on the twos right there. So yeah, in mean, certain sections, I keep going to fast stuff. Any other questions about this particular thing? Uh, yeah, you said you were first doing drawing with some hand that fall out your hand yeah. Well, let's see. If I put this on twos, I got one, three, five, seven, nine, and then five make this total. Right so that's what? One, two, seven, seven, nine. It's like five drawn. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. So if I ten less, I really want it to be slow. Like, bam! And then, you know, there's a bigger contrast. It's super well, slow. Lines, like, mm -hmm. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, what I would do is on the slow part that's really close together like that, I'll do I'll clean up that first extreme and the last one. And I'll really break that. And then there'll be really tight lines that I can go and put those tight lines in between. Yeah, they don't fit. Yeah, otherwise it's just gonna be a group of mess. I will do that for myself sometimes, just rough it in, just to see what it really looks like with all the drawings and before I clean it up. 
and I'll just throw those out and then read in between them again, but make it all clean. But it doesn't take you know hardly any time, it just takes seconds to wrap it in, so I'm not wasting too much time to try to feel what it's good question. So uh, any other questions about this in particular? Otherwise, otherwise I'll just open up the floor. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, when the head hits the table, there's kind of like an effect. You have like this little thing. Like, would you just do that with your paintbrush tool when you clean it up straight on there? Or would you use like a symbol or something where you could have it separate? And I would put on a separate layer and clean it up there. Okay. I always clean up on a separate layer. But too. you don't really use symbols and then do the animation of the face on that don't move or something. No. The only time I use symbols is if. Uh, um, usually if there's a repetitive action yeah. going on. Or if like for dialogue, like in that Tom Hanks thing, we did we had symbols for the, the characters that were moving around acting like this and the mouths would go. Oh, the mouth. Yeah, yeah. Well we re we redrew everything. There was no symbols really. And we tried to keep the symbols down to a minimum. We had symbols, but we tried to do as many new drawings as we could because it looked it. Right. They didn't want it to look like cut out stuff in the room. So we had to like we good technique that we did on that was we had one uh, pose that the layout guys would do. we take that, it was all cleaned up, and then we'd like distort it and start to spread out to start the movement, and then we'd make new drawings all through here, and then we'd take this last symbol, back it up, and distort it so it looks like it's slowing over that pose. So we'd utilize these two symbols and morph those, and it could you know, it'd look really nice. You know, it starts the movement, carry it through really quick, and then start it but these effects I would do in a separate layer for sure. And then I just did that for just to I would actually have this animated out to you know, like three drawings or something. Um, <clears throat> any other questions? Um, I'd like to open up for just question and answer about anything you guys want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you find yourself drawing every day? Like, do you carry around a sketchbook with you? That's a really good question. That's <laughs> 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 to start off with a zinger. I usually don't carry a sketchbook with me for some reason. I'm one of those guys that doesn't do that. But what I'll do is I'll like get little scraps of paper and draw those all the time. But for some reason, I can't like open a sketchbook. Usually, I will do that sometimes. I'll have a run, but I usually just draw on scraps of paper and throw them in the bowl. But yeah, I draw every day. And I'm always drawing just because I love it. In fact, my old boss, uh, on Saturday, he came to work. He said, "What are you doing here?" I said, "I'm just drawing. I'm just animating." Because you're the only guy now who animates just because he loves to. I'm like, really? I'm the only guy? <laughs> I thought everybody was like that. <laughs> yeah, I draw every day. I love it just for fun. I just myself. And it just it kind of just it gets better. You know, there's like all these bad drawings you have to get out of your system. You learn. I, I look at a lot of things, I copy a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but the reason why I copy it is not just because, just to copy it. but. If I see anything that catches my eye that really looks cool to me, I'll copy it to try to figure out what is it about that that I like. What, what was it in that drawing or that image that grabbed my eye, that pulled me over to it? That's what I'm really interested in. Because there's something there, there's a spark there that that artist put in me, got my attention. I'll we'll look at all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, I'll see something once in a while, wow, that's pretty awesome. I gravitate towards that stuff, any style. A lot of 2D guys my age, they, they hate CG. They're like, I didn't want to touch a computer. <laughs> but I think it's a cool tool. You know? I, I learned a lot from working on it. I had to try it out for myself. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I answered that question very well. I think it was about how I got started in business. Is that an adequate answer? Okay. <laughs> Actually, my uncle John owned the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I know people like that, so anyway. <laughs> um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, when you officially got your first interview for an actual animation job, like, I don't know if you did get an interview for your very first job or if you just kind of like ended it, but um, how kind of did you put yourself out there to make sure that you were the best candidate possible? Like, were you nervous, but you know, you're nervous, you were trying to go through Always nervous. <laughs> always been nervous. Because it's the unknown. You don't know what they, what's going to happen. So you're kind of um, my first one, the first job. Wow, let's see. Well, the first time I got some real animation professional was at the 
your animation studio. I was an assistant for I don't know how many years, maybe two years. And uh, I've got this buddy of mine that said, hey man, you should come on and try and fly the studio. So we got, we got in as an assistant too. We were working side by side. And then one day he did a test, an animation test, and showed it from Boston. Boston made him an animator like that. Said, That's a great test, dude. So he's promoted. I'm like, dude, no, wait, wait, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> I got you the job, and you like, passed me up, and you're an animator already. I'm still assisting. So he said, we'll do a test, man. So I did a test, and I was like, bringing it to the guy, and he says, no, 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 fix this, fix that, change. <laughs> so I go back, and he's back and forth like seven or eight times, you know, really trying to get exactly, get it exactly right. And I think the guy realized when he saw it, I kept coming back for more, no matter how many times he'd have me redo it. He says, this guy's serious. He's not going to give up. So he finally promoted it. He says, yeah, I'm bringing the real scene now. I can pay you down. So nervous too, you know, with the first scene. It's like, oh my god, what if I blow it? So it's, it's nerve wracking. Oh, and here's a hot tip for you guys if you ever go on an interview. After all the years of going on these interviews and stuff, I was always nervous and stuff. And I thought, this one time I was going on this interview, I thought, you know what? I'm going to just shed all that. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to be the baddest dude ever. I'm going to walk in there and just act like I'm a god, you know? And there was this big, huge conference table, like 12 people in all these different departments. And they were asking me questions, firing questions. And I was like, yeah, you know, and, oh, come on. And I was acting real cool. I tried to did not get the job. <laughs> so just be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. I thought, I'm going to just be confident this time. And it was just came off as a jerk. What kind of questions were they asking? Oh, what it was like working on the former production I was on, and I told all the things that I thought were wrong with it. You know? <laughs> it was yeah. I'll never do that again. That was just the dumbest thing. So there's some good advice for you guys. <laughs> just, just be yourself, relax, and try not to be nervous. Don't pretend. It didn't work for me. <laughs> So, so do you feel like ultimately it's the person you are over the, the work, the quality of the work that, that gets you hired? It's part of it, yeah, it's a big part of it. I mean, when jerks come in and interview, people are like so put off by it, they don't care how good you are, they don't want to work with you. So they just forget it. But yeah, you've got to be able to do the job. You've got to be able to be confident. So yeah, I work really hard, like I said, practice at night, take classes, ask all kinds of questions from everybody at work during the day. I, I just try to get as much input as I could and you know, for inspiration all the time. Just be the best you can do. That's another thing I was working at Bear Animation for that. I worked there for five years too. I went up to him one day and I said, man, how come I can't I animate something rough, but then when I go to, to tie it down, I'm, I'm, when I'm animating, it's not coming out right. And he said, well, what you're doing is you're trying to draw and animate at the same time. You've got to just animate and then worry about the drawing as a second stage. So treat them as a separate thing. You're going to be much better at it. You're trying to do too many things at once by you know, beautiful drawings oh, and just the I don't know if you guys have ever seen any of James Baxter's pencil texts. He, I guess he does like stick figures, right? It's really, really simple. And that's how he gets it to move all nice and fluid and stuff. Just go right over it. Frame looks all done. Imagine when you were breaking in you you would you know ask the different departments you know, how they do it and, and they were really nice to show you how, how they did that. Do you feel that like, like all studios are like that or typically are most of them friendly they'll help you or you get a feel kind of get a feel for how they are before asking? Like how do you do this, how do you do that? In general most people are pretty willing to you know, because it's what they do all day. They're like, yeah, yeah, let me show you what I do. They're kind of the fact if you're just showing an interest if you're into whatever they're doing. It's cool, you know, so they enjoy talking about it. But some people are really like closed and won't like share anything. You know, nah, 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 busy. <laughs> you don't want to show you their secrets or whatever. Which is, I can understand, you know, where they're coming from, but I don't, I wouldn't do that. I, I like sharing. So, um, how much work do you have to do in, in a week in, in, in a production? That's the question I didn't get to answer properly. That's right. Um, um, well, mm -hmm. most studios. 
Uh, I'd say an average of 15 feet a week. Some studios want to see like 35 to 40 feet a week, which is phenomenal. That's a lot of work. That's like Eric Goldberg speed. He's really fast. Some places have seven feet a week. It's a, it varies between studios, but I'm saying on the average, maybe 15 feet a week. Just the, the rough animation, it's not the cleanup. Well, it's rough, but yeah, it's not cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the roughs. Not the first pass roughs like this, but the actual finished drawing. Mike, can you break it down bit? Minutes or seconds, actually? You know what? I need a calculator for that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a calculator on the desktop or something? Yeah. yeah. It should be Accessor. 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 